You are listening to the CWL Podcast. Are you ready? Hey, everybody. It's Kate. I am the host of the Creative Women's League Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I am super excited to have you here. The Creative Women's League is here to provide you with motivation, inspiration, know-how, and my personal favorite, community. We have two weekly podcast episodes. You are tuned into the interview episode. This comes out every Wednesday with a new creative badass. She will tell us her journey and how she got to where she is today. It is always full of nuggets of awesomeness, great information. Today is no exception, of course. We also have Mindful Monday episodes, just quick 10-minute episodes every Monday to help us get our motivation up for the week. It's awesome. We just have a little chat, get our mindset right to kick ass all week long. Now, so many of you listen to the podcast, and I appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget to head over to the Instagram, at Creative Women's League, and join us because that is where the majority of the discussion happens. You're only getting a small piece of of what we have to offer here if you aren't joining the community. Now, some of you might not be Instagram people, and I understand that. It's not me. I'm Instagram obsessed. But if you're more of a Facebook person, you can search Creative Women's League and find the Facebook group. Join that. You can also like our page while you're over there. Listen, the pillars of the Creative Women's League, motivation, inspiration, know-how. So much of that is coming from this podcast. But if you want all three of those plus community, which, like I said, totally my favorite, you've got to head over to the Instagram and the Facebook. So as you listen to this, well, if you're listening to it on the Wednesday, it comes out. (laughs) When this comes out, I will be in Aurora, Illinois. How exciting is that? I actually got hired by Bernina to be an educator. I'm so excited. Once again, There's more information about it over on the Instagram, but really I'm just amped. I'm going to travel around and teach classes with Bernina. So if you want to see me at your local Bernina dealer, write him an email, reach out to him. If you are a Bernina dealer, hi, I'm Kate. How are you? (laughs) I'm really excited. You guys know that I am going to be taking the positivity and the support of the CWL right into those classrooms to teach everybody in a support supportive, loving environment, lots of motivation, lots of inspiration. Oh, I'm just so excited. So this is the part of the show where I read out one of our iTunes reviews. iTunes reviews are huge for podcasts. It means a lot, helps tiny little baby podcasts like this one get seen on a broader scale. So since so many of you do me the awesome favor of leaving a review, I like to thank you by giving you a shout out right here on the podcast. So today's review reads, inspiring, five stars, love learning and getting inspired by all the podcasts shared here. Truly amazing. And that's from Mayor L. Thank you so much. I appreciate it immensely. When you head over to iTunes to leave your review, don't forget to share your Instagram name so I can give you a shout out right here. If you aren't an iTunes listener, then head on over to our Facebook page. You can leave a review over there and you'll get read out on the podcast. Come on. I want to be saying your name on the podcast next week. I have been so excited to share this episode. Today, I get to talk to Go Go Kim. Now, some of my non-quilting listeners might not be all that familiar with Go Go Kim, but quilter or not, go follow her right now. She is a social media guru that everybody needs in their corner. Kim is so much fun and Go Go Kim is the perfect nickname for her. You can hear that she goes and goes and goes and her uplifting spirit is so much fun. I felt so ready to tackle new and exciting things for CWL after this episode. One of which, by the way, is the new CWL blog, which will be coming out June 1st. We set a date. You know, I figured June 1st was lucky for the podcast. Let's have June 1st be lucky for the blog as well. If you want to contribute to the CWL blog, head over to thecwl.com. All the info is right there, and I want you to contribute, so get your booty over there. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) 
<laughs> Am I rambling? Would you like to hear Kim? Okay, okay. I'll shut up. You can go listen to Kim and I in this wonderful talk about life and social media and all things creative. Hey, Kim, how are you? Hi, good morning, Kate. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so happy to have you. I know that we have an amazing episode in store, so I'm really, really excited. <laughs> <laughs> I am. So where are you calling from? I'm calling from Spotsylvania, Virginia, which is a real place. Most people say, what? Where? Is that real? <laughs> it is. It I know because I live here. And I have to write it out when I send packages. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had, I mean, honestly, I think we've had more guests from the show from Virginia than anywhere else. We're a happening place. I know. What the heck? I feel like we've all been ignoring Virginia and we should not be doing that. You wouldn't believe the amount of people. I mean, I, you know, Pat Sloan, Annabelle Wrigley, um, Nicole from Finch Studios, uh, who else? Well, Kimberly Inamo just left us and moved to California. Uh, let's see. Allison Glass is here. Wow. Um, uh, Amy Simbaldi is here. Who else is here? We have a lot of people. No. Oh, kidding. Amy Gibson just moved here too. She just moved here recently. Yeah, we've got a whole slew. We should just do a retreat here. I'm down for it. I'm ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> I am so ready for that to happen. So before we dive into everything, can you introduce yourself to everybody? Oh, sure. I'm happy to. My name is Kim Needswicky, and because my last name is so hard to pronounce, um, people just call me Go-Go Kim. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, a, a thrill sewer. I um, will sew anything. Um, it gives me great joy. And on the side, well, actually, my full time, my full time part time job, other than being a mom taxi, is um, creative small business uh, social media consulting and management. And I've been doing that for about, gosh, almost six years. Um, I started off with Oracle Thread in 2012, um, and I. I um, left in 2016 in February, and then started on my freelance life, which is kind of crazy. And I'm, I'm kind of the behind the scenes of a lot of different things. <laughs> I love it. I'm so excited because I've already talked to you a little bit about social media, and I can tell you have such a passion for it. So I can't wait to get to that because you've got such great information for our listeners. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 so you said you were born here when we were talking before. Uh, you guys didn't hear any of this. Ha ha. Sorry. Um, but you said you were born in Jacksonville. I was, I was born, um, next to the St. John's river, um, in Jacksonville at Baptist hospital. And every time when I was a kid, we would go over the bridge and I'd be like, I was born on the third floor right there. Yeah. <laughs> and not that anyone cared, but hey, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, you want to tell people these things. <laughs> yes, I grew up in Florida, moved to Georgia, gosh, when I was 11, so lived in Atlanta through the 80s, which was a raging good time, yeah. <laughs> um, much of which I probably don't remember. Yes. Um <laughs> <laughs> had fun at clubs like 688 and the Metroplex. Both are not there anymore. I swear, everything I've done in life is, like, not there anymore. So I have no real proof. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you just shut them down. You were just so much fun that they're like, well, once Kim's not hanging out here anymore. I know. Just shut it's it like, down. What's left? Just shut what's it left? down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then went into the Navy. So... Went down to Orlando, and now that shut down too, as yeah. I was telling you. Yeah, they quit after I left, whole base, RTC, NTC, gone. Well, Couldn't hang. And I didn't even know, because you're telling me about Orlando, I'm living here not knowing that that was here at all. Yeah, I wish I could remember what is built. There's some subdivision now, but there used to be the... the um RTC and all of the women when they went to boot camp went to Orlando. Guys could go to Great Mistakes or 
sorry, Great Lakes <laughs> or San Diego, but all of the women had to go through Orlando. Wow. That's really yeah. interesting. And then on the other side, they had the training command um, where the new guys went and some other schools were there. But, yeah, they closed all of it down and bulldozed it and got rid of the blue jacket ship that was there on base for training and uh, built it up. So what what made you go into the Navy? What Not drew clue. you to that? <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, you know, you're you 18. What do you know? <laughs> yeah. I just always find it so interesting to see, like, you know, my boyfriend went into the army and I, it's just not something that was ever inside me. So I always think it's so fascinating. Like, well, what, why, why did you do that? Um, I, honestly, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I, I was that. not, I was not what you would call a great student in high school. I kind of hated the whole dynamic of high school. Yeah. And so I chose to spend my time um, going to museums. <laughs> I swear, I would skip school to go to museums. That's oh what gosh. I would do. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I was a bad influence because I would drag some of my really good friends with me. I'm like, it's a beautiful spring day. Let's go hiking. And so we would go hiking or to the museum or... I don't know, to the library. It was, yeah, yeah. interesting. <laughs> In the short amount of time that we've been talking, I just totally understand the nickname Go Go Kim now. That was actually given to me by mistake by a little boy. Oh. <laughs> and his family, <clears throat> when Katie was a baby, um, and my older boys, I have four kids. Okay. The oldest is 30. Then um, the second is 27. Then the third is um, our daughter. She's 17, about to graduate high school. And then our youngest is 11. And he's a boy. So three boys, one girl. So after um, then House Teenager was born and she was, you know, about 10 months old, I met a mom at the boys' school who had a daughter the same age. And she happened to have two sons that were about the same age yeah. as my sons. And so they would have nicknames for all of their friends, especially if they had two friends with the same name. And they had two friends named Kim. So one was whatever Kim. She doesn't matter because this is about me. Yeah. And... Um, <laughs> And then, um, for some reason, her son said, are we going to see Go-Go Kim today? And she said, we don't know anyone named Go-Go Kim. And he said, yes, we do. Go-Go Kim, you know, Katie's mom. And she looked at him and she said, do you mean Volvo Kim? I, I drove oh. Volvo. So it was, <laughs> and he's like, no, Go-Go, because, you know, she just goes and goes and goes. So... From back then, you know, the nickname just stuck. And it's so perfect everything, for you. everything I've done has always been go go, whatever. And it just makes it easier because my last name is just too much for people to handle. Yeah. Especially <laughs> sober. It's, it's a <laughs> <laughs> I love it's, that though. I it really it suits you so perfectly. I know, but I still want to get the white boots. I, you know. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is a must. That is a must. I need to find some in my size and just go for it one of these days. Absolutely. It'd be perfect <laughs> for, like, quilt market. <laughs> oh, yes. It would be. <laughs> That'd be great. You could go with the whole theme. Yeah, I'm sure people would love that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we're living our best life. That's all. We're just doing what we want to do. That's true. We are. We're doing what we're passionate about and to its fullest. And that's what all of it is about, I especially love social it. media. Yeah. And so when did, well, it sounds like you've always been very much a free spirit. You've always been more of a creative mind. Um, I mean, skipping I school to know. go to museums. I, you know, I don't know that I've always understood that I had a creative mind because yeah. I was always told I didn't. 
because that spot was filled by my sister, who is very talented and creative. She's like stupid awesome. (laughs) (laughs) When I was in high school, I had this pair of white pumps. They were so beautiful. And my uh, Van Gogh is my favorite. Um, And so she had gotten, what are they called? The Cray Paws. What are those called? I can't think of it now. The Cray Paws, what are they? Oh, anyway, but she, on the bottom of my shoes, like on Cindy Lauper's album, did Starry Night. (gasps) I could never wear the shoes again because I would have... Yeah. Ruined it, it, but yeah. it was perfect. It was so beautiful, and I cried because I cry at art and stuff. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. I go to museums. I cry. I'm at live performances. I cry. Plays. Cry. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a crier, so I'm down with it. <laughs> yeah, I get really when. Um, I think it was the first quilt market I went to. No, it was the second. And Rob Appel had made a quilt for Quilts of Honor, Quilts of Valor. This is quilt, um, Quilted Honor, and it was the most beautiful thing, and I cried. Yeah. <laughs> I just stood there and cried. It was fantastic. And I was like, why are there not tissues here? Right, I beautiful. <laughs> and so I try to get more control over that now but I don't want to lose it so I don't control it all the time just sometimes <laughs> oh I yeah I totally und- ever since I accepted the fact that I'm just a crier and I'll just mm-hmm. like openly cry at things I think my life's a lot happier <laughs> like I don't have to There's stifle it a word it. for it and the word is duende and oh. it's the feeling of you know being moved by something beautiful and it's actually a really wonderful thing yeah. That you can be moved by beauty, no matter what its form, whether it's written or, you know, if cheese fondue makes you cry, good for you. Yeah, I do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to feel it. And so Duende is my goal in life is to constantly be filled with that sort of passion that moves me. I love it. I love it so much. So when did social media come into the the frame of view for you um 2012 i think i started my blog in 2010 okay maybe 11 something like that and i was kind of forced into it um, (laughs) by friends because they're so wonderful amy and sarah forced me into it so i said okay don't really want to but all right and then i went to my first quilt market the following May um, in Kansas City, and I was approached by Orphil, and they asked if I would um, manage their social media, and so I said, well, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure, (laughs) but, you know, uh, we'll give it a go for six months and see what happens and you know I mean I may not like doing it you may not like the work I do (laughs) so but it it turned out that I absolutely love it um and they seemed to be pleased with what I was doing I (laughs) unexpectedly had to leave because of medical reasons but I'm fine now um but yeah and after I had some downtime and I recovered and everything's great. Um, I realized I really missed doing social media. I really missed, you know, that part of it. It, It's not so much about the sewing and the creativity, but it's about the people. Um, And for me, that was just pulling at me and pulling at me and pulling at me. (laughs) Um, so then I started doing more for more people. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I focused more on my social media for a while and then did some other jobs for other people. Um, and I, you know, managed theirs and grew them all. Every <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> The one nice thing is every time I do it, whoever I'm doing it for, it grows. Um, 
But I think my real joy is sharing with people how they can do their own. And it's really good for them to do their own because it gives you a view into um, what people are doing with these products. And that in and of itself is so inspiring. And, um, oh, I don't want to forget to mention. So do you know Heather Valentine, the sewing loft? I do not. <gasps> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Number one, she's awesome. Make sure. <laughs> Make sure to go check her out. Um, Absolutely. She's the sewing loft everywhere. She is so much fun and she's fantastic and I love her. Uh, she and I, every market, do an event called Missing Market. So hashtag Missing Market. Um, and even though I'm going to be at Market, she's not going to be. But we organize this event with hosts and hostesses and prizes galore and sponsored giveaways at the end of the day each day um, during market so everyone can have fun with following along with us, with each other, building their own communities within the quilting community and with the with all the excitement on the market floor. We have so much fun. I can't wait. I I'm really it. excited. I'm um, teaching one business seminar, and so when I'm not teaching – um, and I'm not consulting with people, I will be doing that full time <laughs> because <laughs> I don't want to miss any of it. I mean, it is, it's every day during market, during market hours. Um, so from 9.30 a.m. Pacific time until 4.30 p.m., every day I think it is, uh, and I think it's for the last day, but um yeah, we'll be there, and if you haven't joined in that event, I encourage you to because it's so much fun. And Yeah, I'm ready to do I've it. I've seen some <laughs> of the prizes that are coming in, and they are good. Yes, I love it. But this is why I love your journey because it sounds like you kind of fell into doing – fell into the blog, fell into the social media. But, you know, we talked before we started recording, and I can tell that it's not just that you – it's not that you enjoy it. It's not that you have passion for it. It's that you've really taken the time to understand what social media means and mm -hmm. how to really connect with people through it. It's not just something you did like, okay, I'll just no. put up pictures for people. It's not just putting up pictures and that's, I mean, pretty pictures are wonderful, but it's what's behind the pretty pictures that matter. Yeah. People can't connect to a pretty picture. People can connect to other people. Um, and so as far as, you know, Instagram goes, and you and I were talking about a, blogs earlier too. Blogs are very important because no matter where you are on social media, um, it's only a tiny snippet of what's really there. It's the tip of the iceberg. And hopefully there's a whole lot underneath the water that you're not seeing um, and that's how you're going to build your community but you can't just you know it's not like a <laughs> it's not like a drive-by you don't just post a picture and go away <clears throat> you have to be engaged with your audience you have to be and it's not only engaged with your art audience it's engaged with people outside of your loop because yeah. if you're just talking about yourself all the time and you're not connecting to those people, it's not going to happen. You have to go beyond. And that's why Missing Market, I found, is so fantastic because it's all real. Yeah. <laughs> all of the participants are real, and they're beautiful, and they are so funny and kind and genuine and just... I'm getting chills talking about them because it's everything that this industry is built on. Everything. Yeah, I and love so that. And so those people are so important to this entire process. Um, and I, I really hope that people tap into that and make those people a part of what they're doing because, you know, algorithms go up and down and up and down and up and down. But... Having a hundred and a hundred people that are there for you a hundred percent of the time 
rather than, you know, 10,000 people that just go like and go away, you know, that hundred matter more than anything in the world. Absolutely. And I think it's really easy, especially when you're starting Instagram, um, you're starting an Instagram for your creative business, whatever, a blog, anything to go, well, my numbers are pathetic. And to really worry about that instead of worrying about, wait a second, there's five people who show up every time I post and they post wonderful things on the pictures and, you know, they're really engaged with what I'm doing. That's amazing. Mm Mm-hmm. It's, you know, those are, those, that is your fan base. If you have five really solid people, those people will talk about you other places too. And they'll talk about you kindly, which is even more important. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and, and that's how the businesses grow is that, you know, you get five people talking to five other people. I mean, it, it's word of mouth. It's electronic word of mouth. That's all it is. Well, absolutely. Yeah. This, there's no better feeling than when somebody, from your community um, has tagged you in something that had nothing to do with you, nothing to do with anything you talked about and just says like, Hey, I thought you'd like this or this reminded me of you or whatever. It's like, Holy crap. This is happening. I get the, (laughs) Oh, that's so kind of you to think, you know, I just get, I get so overwhelmed. Isn't it amazing? With (laughs) moments like that where people are somewhere way out of the realm and they come back and they say, I thought of you. And I just get, I mean, seriously, I, that, I get all chilly and like, oh my gosh, thank you. (laughs) I mean, so cool. It's amazing to me. And as businesses on Instagram, that's when you need to start going outside of your area. You know, honestly, you have your core group, but go search hashtags for certain things. Go outside of your comfort zone. Start loving everything. I love that. You know, even if it's not your style, you find something about something else that is not really your thing because it's there. I see, you know, when I go to different events, I look at everything and I share everything because there's beauty everywhere. It may not be my particular colors, but oh my gosh, I appreciate and respect all of the work that went into it. Absolutely. I love that. And I genuinely feel it. If you go to other people's pages and you post really and truly heartfelt comments, those people will come visit you. And those people may inspire you in ways you never dreamt possible. Yeah. I know I've had it happen to me. I would look at something and go, never happening. And then, It would grow on me. It's like, oh, so happening. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) So don't discount certain areas or certain people or certain things because of your first reaction. You know, kind of embrace it all. Yeah. And because you just, you never know. And it's kind of cool that way. Yeah. And I was doing social media for um, one of the jobs I had. And I was telling them about like, and then I, I need time during the day to go comment on other people's things. And they're, they're like, okay. So you just go right on there like, oh, cool. I love this. And I was like, no, that's not what I want to do here because I think it is so important to have those heartfelt comments. Mm-hmm. That was the most important thing was I'm like, no, I'm not just trying to BS a bunch of people. I'm trying to no, actually connect not. with a bunch of people. You, you find things that really move you in whatever way. Art, you know, to me, art is nothing more than being moved. I mean, it doesn't matter. Good, bad. I mean, there's some art I've seen that is like, ugh, but it moved me. So that artist was successful in my mind because it moved me. It doesn't matter how it moves you, it moves you. Yeah. And these people all are putting effort into what they're doing. All of these wonderful people, it doesn't matter what they're making. It could be their first. It could be their 10,000th. That takes time and effort and money. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> much money. <laughs> so much money. So, you know, appreciating, if nothing else, the effort, the time, the expense, 
and that they are, no matter what their level of ability as far as photography goes, you know, it all is so wonderful that these people do this every single day. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you say to people? Uh, there's been so much talk recently, um, honestly, bad mouthing Instagram. Nobody's gone anywhere off of Instagram. <laughs> we um, yeah. all still sit there, but there's a lot of fear. I've noticed there's a lot of um, almost desperation in all this talk of the dun, 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 the algorithm. <laughs> The bad word. Oh, it's the worst <laughs> word, right? Like everybody snickers at it. I've heard, um, I, cause I talk to a lot of women all the time about like, well, why don't you start your creative Instagram? Why don't you get on there? And I always hear, oh, the algorithm sucks nowadays. So it's always sucks. I'm like, what? I, mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's always I, sucked. It's always sucked. When I first started doing social media, Instagram was not really a thing. It was Flickr. Oh. Flickr was everything. Oh, my gosh, do I miss old Flickr? I miss Flickr. Flickr was the best at community building yeah. because you had your community building pods. You had you you wanted to, to hang out with other Heather Ross, you know, fanatics. You had a whole group for that. Actually, I think there were four. Yeah. You had, <laughs> you know, you had a sew along. Guess what? You had a group. You didn't have to search for a hashtag. You didn't have to do diddly squat to yeah. log into Flickr. <laughs> I, it was lazy people. It was me. <laughs> I love it. And I loved it. I did. It was so easy. And then they changed it all. That's when everybody flooded to Instagram. And from the word go, algorithms suck all the time. But keep in mind that every, every social media platform costs you absolutely zero. Yes. Zero. It costs nothing. So to not start is costing you more than starting. I love it. From the word go. Yeah. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. And Really and truly, the only person stopping anyone from starting is themselves. It's not the algorithm. It's not this, that, or the other. It's not time. Because I can tell you, 95%, 99%, let me, I lied, 99% <laughs> of the people that I know on Instagram, um, most of them are very successful, all have time to do it. Yeah. If they have time to do it, Everyone has time to do it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, but the algorithm is not a reason to not start anywhere. Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, you know, even Flickr. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want to go to Flickr? Great. Twitter, free. Google Plus, free. Everything, free. You can do a blog for free. <laughs> a multiple different, you know, you can do Blogspot or Blogger, you can do uh, WordPress, you can do Typepad, they're free. So yeah. the idea of I can't do it because of the algorithm is, it, is just then you're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, it's just we had an episode where we um, I took a quote from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which was like, all my friends have such big butts. And yeah. so what's your big butt? And a lot of people are like, I want to do Instagram, but the algorithm. Yep. No, no, no. Get out there. Get yourself out there. It is not this terrifying thing. Um, before we started recording, I thought something that you said was great was people have too much information about this stuff. Like, yeah. just go do it. Only one person yes. really knows what <clears throat> the algorithm really wants us to do. So don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about them. Worry about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't worry about how they're going to change. It changes constantly, it, constantly. And no one knows what those changes are except for the people who make them. And possibly even those people don't know because there are probably other people that are micromanaging them and making smaller changes. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's always and it will always be changing. So accept that as part of the game and move on. That's I just love it. So... For the people who are, okay, so now we've, 
we've taken them by the shoulders and shaken them. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're all going click. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay. So I am going to go get myself out there or maybe somebody's, you know, frustrated with the growth of their Instagram. Do you have like, I know there's probably, I, you told me there's 20 pages of it, but what's a great tip for somebody who <laughs> wants to be seen more on Instagram or really just start to grow their numbers on Instagram? Honestly, going back to building your community. Yeah. I mean, go, go hashtag the groups that are your, your people. I don't know what businesses are out there listening. So it doesn't matter what your business is, quilts, garments, whatever. There are hashtags for everything. If you don't know the hashtags for your tribe, Google it. Yeah. Put in top hashtags for sewing, for quilting, for whatever. And Google will come up. Oh, Google's free too, by the way. Yeah, it is. <laughs> free is my favorite four letter S word. Yeah. F word. Sorry, I was thinking snow because we were talking about snow we're talking earlier. About snow. <laughs> free is like the best thing ever. Yeah. Free is so cool. And there's so much free out there. So just start using the free stuff and that will help you. Um, but Google top hashtags for whatever it is you're doing and then start looking at them within those hashtags. Don't go to the top ones. Go to the lower ones. Yeah. The most recent. Start finding things that move you and meaningful comments on those posts. And even if you were to grow by one or two a week, it's better than no growth at all. I love that. And as long as you're, as long as you're being true to yourself and true to your business and putting yourself out there, because don't, don't, you know, expect other people to put themselves out there if you're not willing to do the same. Um, I put like a lot of myself out there. <laughs> <laughs> People get to watch me do morning walks and evening walks and, you know, yesterday I shared my iron infusion. Woo! Yeah. And I know, well, but it's life. It is. Know? And and behind all of the pretty pictures that people post, there's a real person with a real life, sometimes with jobs and kids and dogs or cats and, you know, possibly ailing parents or, you know, there's a lot going on that people don't see. So if you are expecting people to come to you in droves just because you post pretty pictures, that's not going to happen. You have to really put yourself out there. And yeah. that may be more of an obstacle for people than the algorithm. Yeah. Recently, a lot of times it's, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, go A lot for of it. times people say, I don't have anything to say I'm boring. I will tell you this right now. There is not one single solitary boring person in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I Yes, I totally agree. Stories about people in real life situations being real about their craft, about their life are intriguing. They're yes. fascinating. People are amazing. And every one of us has something in common. To someone else. A lot of times we have a lot more in common. Two or three or four or ten things in common with somebody else. And you will find that those people will respond in kind. Absolutely. I, you know, just trying to find posts that really connect with the Creative Women's League audience. I'm obviously always trying to do that. I found a note from my grandpa and on a whim, I put it up on the Instagram and it's about how he gave me um, my grandma's sewing shears, and they were Aww. her they, right. They were her favorite shears. Nobody was allowed to touch them, and she had <laughs> passed. She had passed ten years prior, and I got them when I started sewing, and that was like wildfire. I mean, I never expected. Then I was talk about crying. Then I was crying so much because people were connecting to that. But it's just because. I shared a sweet thing of part of my family. We all have loved ones that we've lost. We all yeah. had somebody who passed the torch to us in one way or another. And it was just really, I never thought, I thought, oh, people will like this a little bit. People loved it. But it was, um, 
it is that moment where you have to be open and be a real person. It's easy to be mm-hmm. a thousand memes when you're like the creative women's league, right? And just be like, mm-hmm. you can do it posts every day. <laughs> but you're, I totally see that and agree with that. And I never realized how, how much that post would catch on. It was so cool. It's really interesting. Um, in a lot of areas, you know, you live in a populated area. I live in a somewhat populated area. But there are huge parts of this country that have, like, zero population. Yeah. And so there are parts of this country. And parts of the other thing not a lot of people realize is all of this stuff on the web is international. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, world, you know, (laughs) everywhere. Yeah. So we had... For an example, we had these two people the last time we did Missing Market in a country, and I can't remember, Malta. Two people in Malta joining into Missing Market connected and found a new sewing buddy. Yes. Excuse me? It's amazing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's so Are you cool. kidding me? It was the coolest thing ever because on the last day I tend to ask people, hey, what, did, you know, did you make a new friend? Did you, you know, what did you learn new? What did you find? And, or childhood friends. We've had childhood friends that didn't know they lived in the same town. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And it's so wonderful. So uh, for people out there, I mean, you just never know. And for a lot of people that are not in populated areas and don't have a, you know, a quilt guild or a place they can go or people they sew with or for some reason they can't get out, the internet is it for them. Yeah, absolutely. It is their community. So, you know, a lot of times those people need the support that is given. Heck, I need it. <laughs> That's exactly it. I it's easy to think um it's easy to get caught in that very human thing of like, well, I'm not important. What I have to say isn't important, but that's just BS. <laughs> To put it, it is. so very sweetly, it's just BS. Somebody out there needs it. Somebody does. And then you'll find a lot of somebody's need it. Right. Exactly. And those people will share with other people that it's like, hey, you know, this person is one of us. Yeah. And <laughs> it's awesome to be one of them because yeah. they're awesome too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you will see them come up in your feet and you get a smile. You're like, my friend is here. And a lot of times it's, you know, it's yeah. just what you needed. So and that's I've, for a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, ab- yes, absolutely. I've um, done social media for almost every job I've had since the day I got an iPhone. So <laughs> and I've, I've had three jobs in that amount of time. Um, and the one thing that people always come down hard on me about the the owners of the business, even to today, is that I'm not selling enough on their Instagram. That every oh. post is not an ad. That every post doesn't say, <clears throat> call us right now to get your hair done in this way. That everything isn't pushing, pushing, pushing. Well, um, if you're pushing, you're pushing people away. Visually, if you're pushing, you are putting your hands up and sh- shoving them away from you. (laughs) And that's the best way I can explain that. Um, All social media, people are looking to make connections or to be helped. Yeah. And the best way, the best way for businesses to sell is not to sell, but to share how to use their product. If you show somebody how to do, you know, I can't tell you how many times, especially, oh, my gosh, in the Oracle booth and quilt shop owners would come up and they're like, why do I need this thread? It's like, oh, my gosh, you don't even know why you're using the thread. Yeah. And so I would go through, you know, this is what it's good for, this way is good for this, you know, the right tool for the right job. Mm-hmm. Now, for me, when I think of quilt shops, think of all the tools they have in that shop. Yes. They can show an awful lot. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. I can think off the top of my head, I can think of, oh, 
on, you know, 30 second how to's. Yes. The people that understand how to use what those shops are selling are the ones that will go to that shop to buy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah, pushing pushing product is not a great way to sell. I've always been like, well, I don't I'm not doing that on every post. I'm not <laughs> pushing people to get in here and get this, get in here and get that. And I mean, I know you're saying that it's got to be more than a pretty picture, but there are a lot of pretty pictures to take in quilt shops to pique mm-hmm. people's interests and to show people, I mean, gosh, how beautiful are quilt shops? Quilt shops are stunning. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but again, I believe that many shops, that many people believe that they have to have you know, very expensive equipment to take good photos. And this is one of the things I'm going to be talking about in my seminar at Quilt Market is how to do it on a shoestring budget. Because the first missing market we did, I had a smashed iPhone. I had a smashed iPhone for about, hmm, gosh, and it was a four or two. It wasn't even a fancy one. It was a smashed iPhone for, and I had it for probably five or six months. It was sad. Yeah. <laughs> All of my photos from like January until September were taken on a smashed iPhone. And a lot of those got a lot of engagement. <laughs> yeah. And it still worked. <clears throat> and it's amazing the quality you can take with a phone. I happen to have an iPhone. I don't know about Androids. I know my son's Android takes gorgeous pictures. I know because when he went to Antarctica, he sent me a bazillion, and they're amazing. Um, They take great video. You don't have to start with the best. You start with what you have, and you learn how to use it. Oh, another free thing, YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) You want to learn how to do something? Go to YouTube, search for it, and learn it. A lot of times, you know, even if you, if you're planning out your day, plan 15 or 20 minutes just to learn something new, to use what you have. Absolutely. And there's so many free, I mean, a lot of people are, I've noticed that a lot of people are scared to be sold to, so they won't join up on the multitude of free webinars that are available. Mm-hmm. Or give their email to get an opt-in <clears throat> that has great information in it. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, but you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Like, don't be afraid that they do want to sell something to you. They've got to make a living too. Um, but get out there. There's so much free, great information for you. Exactly. There's even, um, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Creative Market. No. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a newsletter everybody should be on because, and by the way, I, no affiliates anywhere here whatsoever. Um, but go to Creative Market, sign up for their newsletter, and every now and again, they, I think it's once a week, they send out free fonts and free stock photos. Oh, fabulous. Done. Excuse me? Yes. Why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, go do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, go do it now. <laughs> Like right now. Well, actually, after you're done with the, yeah. Yeah. After the podcast is over, then go do it. (laughs) Amazing. I love Um, it. But yeah, so many free resources. Go take advantage of them. Yes. Definitely. I just, it's so funny. I just started a newsletter on my stuff and, um, I'm like, I have all these ideas, but I've got to get through quilt market first. Yeah. I get through this business <laughs> seminar first. And then I will be putting out more and more on my newsletter about how to start a small business or any business. I mean, it's any business. Yeah. Honestly, everything um, we were talking before, I mean, I've consulted with um, people in the restaurant industry. I've mentored. I've talk to physicians' offices, you know, um, this works no matter what business you're in. I love These it. These principles are not 
only for quilt shops or quilt makers or pattern designers or, you know, surface. De- this isn't just for our market. Um, this is for everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it, um, it's amazing. I, every day I wake up and I'm so amazed at all the new stuff I learned because I spend a lot of time, <laughs> I spend a lot of time catching up every day too. Yeah. To make sure that, you know, things don't, because things do change overnight. Heck, you know, what was it? <clears throat> the photo editing app, uh, a color story. I went on and it's like, I woke up, I turned it on and it was like, whoa, this is all new. What? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody emails me about these changes. Why yeah. can you ask? So what do you do? You either don't use it or you learn how to use it. Yeah. And it usually doesn't, you know, a lot of times we spend more time talking ourselves out of it. Like you said before, it's like you can tell yourself 10 different reasons not to do it, but find the one reason to do it and go for it. Go for it. Get out there and do things we must do or have. I don't know. Well, just, yeah. <laughs> whatever um so the first one is what is one thing every badass woman should listen to read or watch i put some thought into this one I like that. and what <laughs> to be a true badass you have to listen to yourself <gasps> oh i like it There is no one that knows you better than you. You know what you're truly capable of. You know your strengths and weaknesses. You find those strengths and you build yourself up because if you build yourself up, you're more able to build others up as well. I love that. To be strong for other people. Yeah, trust yourself. Yep. Oh, I love that answer. That's a great one. And the first time it's been said, so... (laughs) Woohoo. <laughs> Look at that. I love it. Okay. And then the second one is who is one woman we should all go follow right now? This isn't somebody you can follow because she's someone in my personal life, but find the one woman you should follow again is yourself truly, but find somebody in your life that treats you with respect that listens to your dreams and that builds you up i love it again it's free too yeah absolutely then you've got your own little cheering section you've got somebody absolutely to bounce ideas off of and pick you up when you feel like poo poo yes yeah <laughs> absolutely yes. yeah i made um you know because creative women's league has been such a weird roller coaster for me like it wonderful things but I just never expected it to take me the places that it has even we haven't even hit a year yet but I found um Holly Ann Knight from String and Story and she's been Mm -hmm. that person for me like I can go to her and be like I feel like crap and she's like you got this and I can be like I'm kicking butt and she's like I told you you got this (laughs) (laughs) she is one of those people she is meaningful she is funny she is kind she is generous i adore her yeah she's i really do she's a very good person so i love that because i through through you know the steps that you were saying before you know getting out there being meaningful with other people i really was able to make a forever friend just through instagram that's so sweet absolutely you have to be kind with your time with your words and you know with your with your love. I mean, put yeah. it all out there and, you know, try and be part of groups too. I don't know if people understand that part of it, but being part of groups um, helps a lot. Yeah, it's huge. It it's really is. It's huge. You know, you see these um, different uh, charity quilts. Quilters are so great when it comes to charity quilts. Oh, my gosh. Um, yes. You know, find one that touches you. And contribute to it. And, you know, it's part of the process. Yeah. Being there for other people is 100% all the time. I love it. And quilters are just the most generous people. It is crazy. God, it's They're crazy. crazy generous. <laughs> it's, <nice. laughs> it's just like, 
wow, they're always ready to, they're like, all right, you scraped your knee. I made a charity quilt for you. You know what I mean? Like we're here in devastating times. And then even in the times that just kind of suck, like quilters are just always there for each other. Mm Mm-hmm. It's amazing. So the last question is, what is one mantra, quote, or affirmation that you lean on often? Um, that also came from somebody, um, my dear, dear, dear friend, Emma Weir. I love her so much. Um, and many, many, many years ago, I think I was 20. I have Michael. So I was 24. Um, Long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> God, long time ago. I'm so freaking old. Um, you know, she she told me, you know, just being you is pretty awesome. And I love it. <laughs> you know, it was it was probably the first time in my life that anyone had seen me for just me. Just yeah. me. Nobody else, not, you know, you're the mom of these people or you're the daughter of so-and-so or you, you know, this, that, and the other, you're not so-and-so. You know, it was just me. And, you know, just being me, pretty awesome. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you're, the only, pretty... you're the only you we're ever going to yeah. get. That's right. Yeah. And so, you know, building on that you know, has taken a long time for me. Um, I hope it doesn't for other people because, boy, whew, yeah. that'll work. But <laughs> um, it's it's very sound advice, you know, just being is pretty awesome. So just Absolutely. That. Absolutely. So simple and so effective. I love, love, love it. <laughs> it's been Thank so you. much fun to talk to you the energy that you just exude and all the positivity and all the you can do itness is wonderful so if there's anybody who's listening right now whether or not you are a quilter I think you have to go follow Kim <laughs> I just do you're so you're such a wonderful like positive influence in people's life uh, you're making me blush <laughs> well you know, you deserve it. You really do. And just Thank being you. here is awesome. Totally awesome. Thank you. I have appreciated my time with you. I really thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course. Gosh, the pleasure is all mine, my dear. But before you leave, you have to tell everybody where to find you. Oh, <laughs> Google, go, go, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> and uh, honestly, I am go, go, Kim on Twitter on Facebook, on Instagram, on Google Plus, on YouTube. I mean, everywhere. Just Google, 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 Google Cam. Go, that's three That's times a lot stuff. of, that would yeah. Be bad. <laughs> Google, go, go, Cam, and you can find me everywhere. And if you can't, then email me at Kim yeah. <laughs> at go, go, Kim dot com. I swear. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm sure that. The majority of our listeners already follow you and adore you, but just in case some s- slipped through the cracks, You're I'm going to so mandate it. Thank you. I'm going to mandate it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no authority here, so it's whatever. But thanks so much. I really did have a great time. I did too. Thank you so much for having me. I told you, Kim's message is not just important for quilters. It's important for every woman trying to make their way on social media for a business, for yourself, whatever it is, go follow Kim, listen to all of her awesome advice, and just love her. Isn't she awesome? Just love her so much. (laughs) Thank you so much, Kim, for being on the show. I greatly appreciate it. I hope after hearing what you've heard today that you have subscribed to the podcast. And I know, of course, you're going to head over to the blog to contribute your awesomeness to the CWL blog. I'll see you on Instagram at Creative Women's League and in our Facebook group, Creative Women's League on Facebook, you can do it. I love you so much. I will see you Monday for another wonderful Mindful Monday. Thank you so much.
you're still here, it's over. Go home. <laughs>